It's nail mail time. Uh, so I just got my um, mystery box in from two, the two guys shop and we're going to go through everything. All right, so I am going to be voicing over everything pretty much after the fact, just because it's a little bit easier, um, just because when I was kind of going through the box, I think I was a little too excited. Um, but there's the card that comes in there that pretty much thanks you for the purchase, which was really cute. The box didn't really have any particular design on it or anything like that, um, which is why I'm not kind of going over the packaging of the box. Um, it was pretty much a plain box. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move the nail tips. Those did not come in the box. Um, there's actually a separate video about that entirely. Um, the stickers, however, are part of the box. So I did go ahead and put that back in there because that part is correct. Okay, so the first thing that I got in the box was the face mask with their branding on it, um, which was actually pretty cool. You can never have too many face masks, especially in this kind of work, uh, work, just because there's like a lot of dust and things like that that can become airborne and get in the lungs and things like that. So you always want to be safe and protected. Um, it felt really nice. It did have a little filter on it overall. It's just a run of the mill face mask and a really nice freebie. Um, it don't. It wasn't listed as a part of the mystery box when we go through the entire total. Okay, so first up is a um, stack of stickers. I ended up getting... Uh, so I am going to kind of run through them. I do apologize if any of them you can't see very clearly. Um, but it was a random assortment from Mickey Mouse to flowers to um, Renaissance picturesque type. Um, I really like them. So like the first two. Um, or, or the first three, I should say, were kind of like Mickey Mouse, very Disney, very Valentine's, very cutesy. Um, which I was like, you know, I'm all for because we definitely have a, a Valentine's Day around the corner with February. This one was a little bit more artistic. It, was, it looked more like a watercolor painting with fairies. Um, this one was pretty much the same as well, where it was kind of just watercolor, um, Renaissance picturesque portraits type. Um, that one did kind of have like crosses and stuff. Um, this one's another cartoon one, um, very cutesy, anytime, no specific season. This is another one where it's kind of got that painting, picturesque portrait theme to it. Um, I believe this one was like Jesus and dogs, which I thought was a very hard combination. Um, I, I don't think that'd be for me, but possibly for a client. This one I did really like, the flower petals, just because I have been obsessed recently with learning how to do flower petals, uh, so the stickers will definitely help out. Uh, you can never have too much lettering. Lettering is one of the easier things um, to do or to, you know, to apply to something per set. Uh, these ones are more of that kind of all over the place, I guess, sticker set. I'm, I'm not too sure how to categorize it very well. This one I really liked um, just because I, I like dragon. Uh, so I was actually really excited about that one as well. Um, and then the last and final one is going to be a little bit more nature, um, leaves, flowers, uh, type of deal, um, which is pretty cool. Next up, we have the Aurora pen set. Um, this one was really cool. Um, it's pretty much a set of Aurora pens. Uh, they don't really have any names or anything like that. They're honestly just numbered one through six. Um, and they kind of go from a red tone to a purple tone to a blue tone uh, to kind of like a teal green tone. One of them's kind of got like a copper orange to it. Um, it's pretty much that pen applicator thing, which is really, really cool. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and open it just so that way you guys can kind of see the shape. But it's, it's really small. It's compact. I like I like the way it looks. It fits into pretty much like any carrier or case. 
um, especially if you're planning to do like mobile sets or um, you travel for any reason at all, you know, while you're doing sets or for like a shoot or something like that, if you're like an on-set kind of nail tech. Like this would work really, really well. Just because of the size is not loose, you don't have to worry about it spilling or anything like that in your case. Um, it is compacted down in there, which is pretty cool, and it also has a spring in there, so not only when you push the pin in, you have a force pushing back into that um, kind of spongy foam applicator, which pretty much packs that chrome powder in there, so that way you're getting more bang for your buck with each application. Um, in another video, I, I should show you guys uh, pretty much how well it worked. I was actually able to do two nails um, with... I want to say two nails of one dip each, um, which is pretty good so that way you're not having to constantly double dip to rub things on there, there's no fallout. Like I said, it's clean, seamless, I think highly efficient. I'm actually really excited that I got these in there. These are one of the first things that I tried um, after kind of going through the mystery box. Okay, uh, so the next thing is the three in one, which is pretty cool. Um, it didn't really have like a name on it. It was just R10. Um, in the description, it just said that it was glitter. Uh, it's a really nice silvery glitter and it is a three in one, which means you can apply like a chrome. You could use it as dip. You can also use it with liquid monitor as well. Uh, it's a really pretty, it is hard to see in the camera. I did do my best to kind of switch the lights so that way you can kind of see um, the intensity of the glitter that I saw uh, in person, um, but I do think it was still a little bit hard to see just with the lighting and for that I do apologize to you guys. Okay, uh, next up is the um, regular kind of acrylic powder. This one is called Millennial. I believe it's number 42. Uh, this is coming from their nude line. So this one's going to be very kind of um, like a muted peach kind of nude. It's really pretty. It might be a little bit too light for me. However, I can use this maybe as like a base or something like that for doing like a simple set. I was on other clients that maybe have a better skin tone that particularly matches that shade of nude. Here is the cover, or the crystal clear, can't have a cover clear, but crystal clear. Uh, I will say that the powder is really, really fine um, and just very like soft looking. Uh, not too much um, difference to say there. Did notice that um, the three in one didn't have the same insignia or like engraving on the top, which is perfectly fine. It just caught my eye late in the game. Um, and then this is the um, other one that I got, which is pretty much the milky white. So this more than likely would probably be like maybe something akin to their French white as I didn't really find one on their site when I went back in to get all the inserts just so that way you guys can see what the colors are supposed to look like because I do realize that my lighting kind of washes out the nude colors. Um, so that way you guys really aren't able to get its true pigment. This next one is 19. Um, this is another one of their nude colors. I do believe one, this one is called Shy Girl. Um, it's also really, really nice. This one's actually a tad bit lighter than Millennial. In fact, it almost looks like it should be a clear or a white in the light. 
um, because it's just that light. It's very similar to um, Millennial, but the only difference is, is it, it's a lighter, lighter shade. This one is called Mossy. This is 30. Um, I'm assuming this is just a tat, like a touch or a teaser from like their color line. Um, it's a very pretty green, um, almost like a lime, almost like a mojito green, I guess. Uh, I am really excited to try it um, just because I am a huge fan of greens, blues, and purples. And so this just really hit me in the feel goods. All in all, it's a total of six powders, one three in one, um, and then five acrylic powders, uh, which is which is a really good deal if you ask me. That's just some, any the most charts from when you are from um, eight, ten, fifteen bucks a piece each. Um, next up, I'm arranging the Japanese butterfly sequin set um, for you guys, and pretty much this is just a set of twelve. Um, that is how it's sold as a set of 12. They give you 12 colors, so it's going to be 6 flat and then 6 dimensional. Um, now as I'm going through and revealing each one, you're going to see what I mean when I say 6 flat and 6 dimensional. Um, some of the other ones have like details on it, which is really, really pretty, and the other ones are going to be closer to that kind of mylar butterfly that you may see more often, um, which uh, I thought was really cute just because it's not that sheer. Um, kind of like see-through mylar feel or look to it. Um, it has some weight to it. it. It's definitely not as sheer. You can't really see through it. It's very opaque, which I'm a huge fan of. Okay, so here's the first one. It's kind of like a blue, blue, green mixture. Um, it's really, really pretty, um, but that is an example of the dimensional ones that I was talking about. They have a little bit more details like in them. Uh, this one's going to be more of like a navy baby blue, which I really did like as well. It's really, really pretty. Um, I think I also ended up using that in a set, um, which I can um, link a video to or put the link in the description below for you guys so you can see it. Um, using them was a lot of fun um, and they definitely were not as thick as I thought they'd be, which is a good thing because whenever you're encapsulating things, you always want them to be on the thinner side just because it's easier for you to not only encapsulate, but layer if you're looking for something a little bit more dimensional. Um, so as me going through the rest of them after kind of setting them aside after I realized, okay, I've got dimensionals and I've got flat. Uh, so I'm going through the rest of the dimensionals. I did show orange and purple previously. Um, and this one seems to be a mixture of purples and teals, um, which is really, really pretty to me. I like that combination very much. Um, I think I might actually do a set just based on those two colors because of those butterflies alone. Um, and then here's the final dimensional one. To me, this one screamed kind of like monarch butterflies, very fall, just because of like the kind of orange and the blue. I know that those probably aren't monarch butterflies. Those are probably more the orange ones I showed earlier. But like the sizing and how big they were, um, per their, you know, feeling, it just made me think of monarchs for some reason. Um, so this is a flat one. These are ones that don't have that extra detail that give it a little bit of dimension or have those patterns painted onto the wings and things like that. Uh, they gave me like pastel orange, a pastel kind of mint. Um, a lot of the flat ones I noticed had more of like a spring tone to it. The purple ones that I'm getting ready to show possibly could be used in the just because they're in a deeper tone, but I know myself, probably going to keep it in spring or something like that just because for me, it's still a bit bright for fall. And then to complement that one, here is the lilac or like that more lavender one, uh, which is really, really pretty. Um, and then the ones I'll be showing after that will be the kind of coral pink, which I, I don't think actually goes well, so let me like pastel pink. The other one was more coral, not as I'm like looking at them again. Um, yeah, the other one was like, like a dark salmon coral, I guess, maybe. 
This one is definitely more like Easter Bunny pastel spring pink, and another one is going to be that like sunshine yellow. They're like all the shapes are different too. Like each color um, has an assortment of butterfly shapes, so that way it's not all the same. They've got some with like sharp wings, rounded wings, uh, a combination of sharp and rounded wings, like you know for like the top and the bottom, which is really cool. So that way you're not stuck with just a flat color with a flat shape. Uh, so that way it gives you a little bit of variety as well, which I really like. Okay, so the next item is these really thin metal gold shavings, which are really awesome, especially the one I'm pointing to right there, um, mainly because it has pineapples in it. So what a lot of people know about me is I love anything that has to do with the pineapple shape. I don't know why, but I'm like so enamored with it. I just think it's the most adorable thing ever. If you put pineapples on clothes, I love it. Nails, I love it. Earrings, I love it. Shirt, shoes, everything, I love it. Like, I don't know what it is. It's just the shape of a pineapple. I love it a lot. I don't even eat pineapples like that. Um, but these metal, um, these, these metal cuts or these thin cuts of like the, the gold metal are very, very, very thin. Um, again, which is really cool because it lends itself really well to being encapsulated. You're not having to worry about actually filing when you're trying to encapsulate because it was either too thick or it was too bumpy. You're not losing anything from it. In addition to that, if you want to layer, it's really good for layering. So if you want to do like gold fillings with flakes with glitter and you just want to stack and stack and stack to build that dimension or have that look of depth that is what that's going to help with um so i'm a huge fan of things that are really really thin and easy to encapsulate because it can enhance any set 10 times over so this is me just trying to show you guys exactly like how thin it is of course i have to use the pineapple to show you but they're very very small very very thin but you cannot tell me that that's not adorable like, are you not in love with that? Okay, so the gold medal slices, um, that's what they should, I think that's what they're technically called, is gold medal art slices for nail decorations and things like that. Really, really nice. I've gotten an assortment of shapes, so from that, that pineapple to flowers, to stars, to moons, to um, just, regular geometrical shapes are really really awesome so this is me just kind of running through all of them for you so we can kind of get a glimpse of everything that i have in there but they definitely give me a variety which i really like if you give me tons of things to choose from that makes me happy uh, i don't like things to be one note or for them to be too similar across the board unless that is specifically the concept or something like that that it's going for um, but like I said, this one's given me a myriad of shapes. Like I said, so I've got fruit, stars, moons, um, geometrical ones, flowers. Um, overall, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Next one is going to be the alphabet. Um, it's just a little bitty set that pretty much has um, the full alphabet A to Z in an array of colors, which is really awesome just because um, while I'm still working on nail art and learning lettering, and now have stickers as well as these really thin um, decos or de well, not really decals because they don't stick, but little decorations that I can use to enhance my set or you know spell out words that maybe I'm not really good at painting and things like that. Um, I didn't see any numbers in it. It really is just letters A to Z, um, and they give me all the colors from pretty much Roy G. Biv as well as that black and that silver. So I'm really really happy about that. Okay, so here are the marble inks. These ones are really fun too. I love marble inks just because of the things that you can do with them. You can make, you know, traditional marble designs. You can use them to make um, kind of like abstract watercolor designs. Like you can, the, the possibilities of marble ink is infinite. So the first one I'm opening is burgundy. I am gonna say that it looks more red than burgundy. Now I understand that burgundy is a derivative of red. However, um, it should have, um, 
almost like a magenta, if not uh, a kind of plum tone to it to make it burgundy. Uh, so I am a little bit curious how that's actually gonna come out. Um, and that one's number 90. Okay, and then the white one is number 12. Um, this one was really interesting too, just because I hadn't really seen a white marble ink before. Um, a lot of times if you're going to try to marble white, you would just either use white acrylic or white gel. Um, and then obviously with the gel, you would just use alcohol to kind of run it out or splotch it up to make that marble effect. This here, opening it up, it's opaque. It's not thick. Um, it's just as thin as any other marble ink and I thought that was really interesting so I am excited to try that because you can put that on darker colors to make things like jade or whatever other agate crystals. Really quickly I did want to show the dampened dish. I thought that was super cute. The way that they have their name on top of it is also really really cute. So they also gave me spider gel which was really interesting. I had never had spider gel before so I was actually really excited about this. This now gives me a chance to try spider gel. Um, and then they gave it to me in white, which is pretty interesting as well. Um, but at the same time, white goes well against a lot of things because it's a very good contrast color. Here I was able to see exactly why they call it a spider gel. It has this weirdest like sticky consistency, pretty much like, you know, a spider making its web. So I definitely see where it got its namesake from. It only took a little bit to try to clean it up, but it's still really, really cool and I cannot wait to try it. All right, so next was the two-in-one top coat and gel crystal gel. Um, so you could use this to either top coat your creation, encapsulation and things like that, or you can use it to put on top of your finished product and, you know, um, mount or adhere gems and things like that. I was tapping it because I thought it was that really thick kind of like one where you can take it out and rub it between your fingers and then, you know, still it'll still have stickiness, things like that. But upon opening it, I quickly realized that that is not it. It was just filled to the brim, which is perfectly fine. Um, but it definitely does not have that kind of like thick 3D carving gel consistency. It is more of like a um, liquid or softer um, viscosity, which is not bad because a lot of times if you want to adhere gems and things like that, you are going to want it to be a little bit thicker, but you don't want it to be so thick that you can't move your crystals and stuff like that around once they're on there. Because we all know sometimes we're going to change our minds when we're putting crystals on there. In the box, I also ended up getting their fragrance monomer. Now, I'm not sure if they meant fragrance, like it's supposed to not smell as much like traditional monomer or be as um, heavy handed with this um, smell. Um, but I am gonna tell you right now after opening it, um, it smells pretty much like regular old monomer. It's, it, it's not fainter, it's not lighter or anything like that. It also doesn't have a perfumey smell to it. It's pretty much the same monomer. I imagine it just named it fragrance, obviously for like marketing and things like that, as well as the kind of like elevated and make it a step up, which is perfectly fine. I am still interested to test it just to see how it works well with other products or if it is one of those ones where it has to be homogeneous with its own product. We all do know that there are products that only work well with itself and are not very versatile. Uh, so on top of that, they did give me some um, arbor bands or standing bands, depending on who you talk to, um, and 100 count. So they gave me um, medium. They also gave me some drill bits, which is really cool because I actually was going to buy more drill bits. Um, and then here, they gave me like the fan, the cuticle bit, um, and um, the cone and things like that that are really good for like taking down bulk and helping with chipping the nail if you end up adding too much product. Um, which is really cool because we all can never have to do that. Uh, 
Um, and then here is the uh, brush. So it's a 3D brush on one end, which is going to be that kind of like painter point fine print. And then this is a gel brush on the other end. So as you can see, this is a little, that one is going to be the 3D side. And then this here, which is flatter, oh, reverse it. So this here is the 3D side. The other one's a little bit flatter will be the gel side. And so you would just use that to kind of apply your gel and things like that um, if you were doing that and using a cursor. The next brush is the um, rhinestone picker, as well as the dotting tool, which I thought was really, really interesting. So this is a lot thinner than the one that I've been using recently. If you look at it, it's sharp, it's to the point, it's almost like a true pen. Like, look at the difference. So I think it, it's, I would rather use that than the chunky one, but I think this is me because I like thinner, thicker items. Now the dotting tool, which is really cool. I'm probably really only going to ever use it to just rearrange whatever crystals I put on there. Um, that and I like that it gives you a little bit more of that length. So it, it almost serves as purposes, like rearranging your crystals as well as just you doing like a kind of stuff for it. Um, here is the Kalonsky brush. I do believe it is size 14. Um, I just got to soak it in some alcohol to get the powder or the residue out of it. Um, but other than that, it's pretty good. It looks you know, like your normal brush is really, really pretty. Um, this is me just being like, oh yeah, I gotta do some alcohol stuff. I don't know why I fiddled with it so much. Um, but yeah, it's pre-pinched as well, so it's already kind of got that oval shape to it. Um, it's not easy to see just because I am fiddling with it a little bit too much. Um, the brush overall looks really, really pretty. It kind of has that same theme that the two guys theme has, which is that white, kind of like that bronze gold. Or that almost like that pink tone gold to it. Not exactly rose gold, but pretty cool. All in all, this box was really, really cool. I am gonna run through everything because I do know that people are gonna be curious about the prices of everything, which is perfectly fine. So I'm gonna do a quick rundown of everything, how much they cost, so that way we can go over the value of the box as well as what I pay for at the box during the time of holiday. Because I did order this around Christmas, um, so I'm not too sure if that would change the price of anything or if that was the going price at that time or if that will always be the price. Because um, it, it was $1.99, obviously, with tax and shipping and handling, it's going to be a lot more. And then on top of that, I did order tips. So I think my total was around maybe $2.10, $2.20 and some change, give or take. Um, but the box overall was marketed at for um, $200, like I said, $199.99. Um, for roughly $600 worth of product. So I'm gonna run through really quick for you guys. So that way if you are curious, um, you can just kind of pinpoint, you know, what specific item you maybe want from them if you wanna try it, um, and or just, you know, see if it is something that you'd be interested in in the long run. Okay, so the size 14 pinch Kalonsky brush was $44. The 2-in-1 um, crystal gel was $30. The marble inks were two at $15 a piece, so $30 for those. The holographic alphabet glitter for with the 12 colors was uh, $10 for that. The acrylic powders, five each at $16 a piece. And then the three in one was 25 by itself. This is me rearranging those just so I can make sure. Yes, those ones, those ones right there are $16 a piece. Um, and the one set aside by itself is gonna be 25. The spider gel was $10. The um, safety bit set was $99. The arbor bands were $15. The stickers were um, $3 each, so $36 for the 12. The monomer, 8 ounces, was 25. 
The Two Guys Dampen Dish was also $25. Aroma Chrome Pins were $45 for the set. The Japanese um, Sequence Butterflies were $40. The Dual um, Gel Pen Brush was $25 and the Rhinestone Picker was $18. Yeah, so that one's 18, and this one is going to be 25. And then the ultra thin gold slices were 45 for the set. So those all come together, similar to how the Japanese sequence butterflies came together. Um, it is going to be one whole set. All in all, the entire thing was $602 um, per item sized list that they gave me. And since I really only paid like 200 bucks for it, that's a really good deal, especially since I got a lot of things that I was one, going to buy to replace what I had anyway. To me, I came out on top, like floating on this. So yeah, 10 out of 10 on this box. <laughs>